fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them were given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, with many horses running in the battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tail. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One war is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after this day. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Chapter 10 Revelation chapter 10 I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea, and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land 
raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy it again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Revelation chapter 11, 1 to 14. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. Now wait, do you know what temple was being measured? As we see, this temple is of our time, based on scripture, because this is the time Yeshua called the times, times and a half, which is in fact, 42 months, 1,260 days, three and a half years, and 187 weeks. Now, you would think they are already in the temple area, as it was said in Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Yet, what I'm going to show you will give you true understanding. And it's concerning this coin. Until 150 years ago, everyone thought that the ancient city lay within the confines of what is today known as the old city. But you see, the walls of the old city are only 450 years old, built by Suleiman the Great during the Ottoman Empire. Whereas the original walls, dating back more than 3,000 years, are situated outside the old city, 500 yards to the south. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to strike the earth with all plagues, as often as they desire. 
when they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. Overcome them and kill them. Now notice this is the first time we hear about the beast in Revelation. There are excellent questions being asked here, like does he rise before or after the sixth trumpet, which is the second woe, which is the time, times and a half, which is 1,260 days, 42 months, three and a half Hebrew years, also 180 Sabbath weeks mathematically. Let me first show you the video about the woman with 12 stars above her head, clothed in the sun, and stands on the moon, which isn't that nine month sign some people seen of Jupiter, but rather the rebirth of Yah's people. And for those saying, no, it's the birth of Christ. No, that's nonsense. Knowing soon as the child is born, he is lifted up to the throne of Yah. Also, it has the same time frame of 42 months, literally right after the birth. Verification, Psalms 2, 7 to 10. I will declare the decree Yah has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Answer me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, O ye judges of the earth. Someone might say, this has to do with Yeshua, Jesus only, yet they don't understand the verse. See, by Yeshua being given the rod of iron, he also gives it to they who overcome the trials of the world as Yeshua overcame. Is there verification? Yeah. Revelation 2, 26 to 28. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. So he's saying he already received it. I mean, it goes deeper, but you'll understand as the video goes on. Revelation chapter 12 Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Alright, this is the spirit of Jerusalem. The twelve stars are the twelve disciples, the gospel, and the twelve tribes of Israel combined, because they are above her head as a crown this is concerning the direct children of yah and the renewed people are in her belly she's also clothed in the sun and the moon is under her feet this represents the father and the son the sun is righteousness it's the glory of yah mentioned in malachi 4 and 2 reflecting the glory of yah is the moon is the rock it's the foundation of yeshua in first corinthians 10 and 4. Scripture for understanding, Genesis 37, 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more and behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. Also Revelation 21, 23. And the city had no need of the sun nor the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it and the lamb is the light thereof. Now you can see by understanding these in multiple layers of the Bible, you can understand that this is nothing new. As you see in Genesis 37, 9, that was actually Joseph that had that dream. But it goes deeper and deeper. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third 
of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give her, to devour her child as soon as he was born. Obviously, here is Satan, the true enemy, head of this world. The seven heads are the seven continents. Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, South America. The ten horns are ten king nations. The US, Russia, China, Germany, UK, France, Japan, the Gentile patrol Israel, Saudi Arabia, and South Korea. The seven crowns are seven evil spirits mentioned in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. These six things does Yah hate. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among his brethren. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and the child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Micah and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 13 Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. 
So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceived those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Six, six. Sixty days, which is 42 months, which is three and a half years, which is also 180 weeks. The time, times and a half mentioned in Daniel 12 and 7, the two witnesses, which are indeed two angels, are killed, but only for a sign to expose the beast and be lifted up. Then is the blessing for those who wait, because you're going to need it, because you don't want to be left behind. Therefore, keep watch. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them Make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. 
Now after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. In the same hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, seven thousand people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second war is past. Behold, the third war is coming quickly. Revelation chapter 11, 15 to 19. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this war have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, and earthquakes, Chapter 11, the seventh trumpet, is what is called the rapture. More understanding on the rapture in Revelation 14, 14 to 16. For the good harvest and the instantly saved. And Revelation 14, 17 to 20. For the instant wrath gathering. This is the final woe. The woes are for the enemies of Yah only. Make sure you note that. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud. Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, who had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust her sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city, 
and blood came out of the wine press up to the horses' bridles for one thousand six hundred furlongs. Revelation chapter 16 Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sorrow came upon the men who had the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over this place and they did not repent and give him glory. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. <laughs> then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold! I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Then the seventh angel poured out his bow into the air. And a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a tent. 
Men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. This is the end of all wickedness on the earth. Yet, what is next? What will be the end of these things? The beginning of salvation and rest. Continuing with chapter 17 and on.